If Dr. Money did indeed behave like this, the parents were unaware. The twins only revealed their experience when they were adults. David told us what Dr. Money had done long after we had stopped seeing him. And we were horrified. We thought, how could this happen to children? But not everyone believes the twins' story. I asked John about that. John said that's absolutely false. People remember things that have a sexual meaning to them from earlier years that very often are not, are not true, so-called false memories or false memory syndrome. Things that happen earlier on in life that have a sexual meaning to them, okay, sometimes get misremembered, sometimes get elaborated, okay, expanded to things that did not actually happen. That's one possibility. Whatever the truth of the allegations, most apparent was that Brenda was growing into a lonely and troubled child something surgery alone would never be able to fix. 13-year-old Brenda appeared to be having a hard time adjusting to being a teenager and fitting in with her peers. Brenda had almost no friends growing up. Girls didn't want to play with her because she wanted to play boy things. And boys, of course, didn't want a girl in their games. kids at school were bullying me because I was different. That's what kids do. Kids always bully somebody who's different. It's the law. <laughs> Compared with most families, mine's a loser. I think most girls aren't very nice. My feeling about married life is rotten. My mother and I have nothing in common. To me, the future looks bad. Someday, I will see the sun soon. Brenda was being asked to undergo a genital operation. She refused, but was becoming increasingly masculine looking. In 1978, the year of the proposed surgery, when she was almost 13, her psychologist, Dr. John Money, made one last attempt to persuade her. The doctor enlisted the help of a transsexual. Is there anything you'd like to ask me or anything you'd like to say? Dr. Money thought that when Brenda saw someone who voluntarily submitted to a genital operation, she would be willing to have surgery, too. Some experts think this was a reasonable course of action. I could imagine that Money would have asked a transsexual to talk with Brenda um, to offer a, a kind of role model, an example of why it would be okay and to give her a vision of someone who was happy to have had such surgery and who felt good about herself as an adult woman. Um, actually, it seems like it could be a very smart thing to have done. It's painful, but the pain... We don't know what the transsexual and Brenda spoke about, but we do have a record of what happened next when Dr. Money concluded their interview. I want to tell you one more thing. When you talk about your identity, being male or female, boy or girl, man or woman, 
That's called your gender identity, and that's a very, very tough thing for you to talk about. Now, I've had not just a few, but many people come into this office with exactly the same feelings as you have. There's something you, you cannot talk about, and yet it's the most important thing in your life. Are we finished? Thanks for talking. I want you to know I'm going to be the one person in the world you can tell anything to. <laughs> to a garage about eight blocks away. You're welcome to come along. I don't want to talk. That's okay. Look, you need a walk, and I have to go to the garage, so we'll keep each other company. You don't have to say one word unless you like. Dr. Money's approach backfired catastrophically. Brenda told her parents that she would kill herself if she had to see the doctor again. It got so bad where you wind up having, I wound up having like a breakdown, I'd shake like a baby and cry and huddle in the corner. I didn't know why I was behaving like that. The psychologist had stressed that for Brenda's reassignment to be successful, she must never be told about her real identity. But faced with a suicidal child, Brenda's parents decided to tell her and her twin brother the truth. The family prepared to divulge the secret they'd kept from her all this time. When their daughter threatened suicide, the Rhymers decided they had to tell her the truth about her identity. Oh, my dad just uh, wanted to take me out for an ice cream cone. Uh, usually, when dad uh, takes you out for a cone, it usually has to do with bad news of some sort. Um, Dad, is yeah. there anything wrong with Mom? No, Mom's fine. What about Brian? Is he okay? Brian's... Brian's good. Then what about my schoolwork? Is that okay, too? We're well, very proud of your schoolwork, Brenda. It's, it's great. Yeah. Then uh, what's wrong? Well... You, uh... You have a right to know something, Brenda. I don't remember... 90% of what happened in the car. Dad told me that I was had a glaze over my eyes, and I was staring over the dashboard, and I had ice cream all over me that was melted. And we brought you up as a girl. And I thought to myself, well, I'm not crazy. I'm not turning insane. And I thought I was turning insane. At the same time, their mother Janet told Brenda's twin brother Brian. And I told Brian to come and see me. And I said, well, you know how Brenda was always more of a tomboy than other girls? He said, yes. And I said, well, you know that Brenda was born a boy, your twin brother. No! I think Brian reacted the way he did, because now all of a sudden, to realize that she was his brother and he wasn't the only boy was a terrible shock to him. But for Brenda, this was the first time in her life she started to feel happy. She said she wanted to be a boy. At that moment, she said, I do not want to be a girl. I want to be a boy. So.